Welcome in, Gov fans, here to Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium on the campus of William Blood High School. It's Tuesday night. Basketball here as the first game of December. Stan, in December, you still, you're still still kind of in that preseason time uh, before you get into the district play and uh, just still trying to find out who your team is. Yeah, certainly. We have looked to play a bunch of games, Robbie. Most of them have been here at Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium. But, uh, yeah, you know, you are finding that, and you just uh, – Basketball is a tournament sport, and really it's how you plan at the end of the year, but you, you set yourself up in district play, Robbie, for your seating, but then you set yourself up for district play in these games. These games do matter. Uh, they're not devastational. You know, devast but they, they're learning experiences. Right, exactly, to see who can play with who and who you can't play with. I mean, like right now they've got a player out, so... You know, how they're going to have to see how they can react with that and, and so forth. And actually, uh, he's had to, a couple of times he's had to mix up the lineup this year. Yeah. As Taylor rules out tonight, uh, Chloe came back last game after missing uh, two. So Izzy Kidd was out last yeah, week yep. as well. She's, she's back tonight. She's back. But, yeah, getting the start tonight will be sophomore Eliza Hicks. She'll move into the starting lineup. And then Caitlin Husband will be the sixth girl coming in tonight. Tonight's opponent is the McMinn County Lady Cherokee, Stan. We watched them last year, uh, got the better of uh, William Blunt, but it was two competitive games. Yeah, it certainly was. And, uh, you know, I don't know a lot about them, Robbie, this year. Is, uh, uh, they we come in, get... yeah, three and one record, and their only loss is 24 points against Bradley, Bradley Central. which is, a, I mean, a very good basketball team. So we'll see what happens today or tonight with that is uh, – you know, uh, I know David Tucker does a really good job down there, and uh, so I would say that they're going to be a pretty competitive uh, team and uh, be a challenge for William Blunt, especially without Taylor yes, in the lineup. That is your pregame preview. Tonight's game brought to you by Heartland Roofing, A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. Give Nate a call, 865-323-5933. We will take a one-minute break and then come back with tonight's National Anthem. All right, back here as we're getting ready for the starting lineups. Tonight's lineup is brought to you by Lon Butler of Knoxville, the one-stop shop for all landscaping needs. Give them a call, 865-777-1755. Number two, Isabel Hooper. Number three, Lexi Moore. Number 10, Aubrey Gonzalez. I remember her from last year. Number 24, Kaylee Rogers. 
And number four, Lily Sliger. 44. Or 44, yeah. They come in with a record of three and one, coached by uh, David Tucker, Monroe County legend. Lady Governors under the direction of Coach Callenberg come in with a record of four and three. Freshman Allie Everett. She'll be inside, number 24. Liza Hicks. I think this will be her first career start for the sophomore. In there for defensive purposes for sure. Number three, Charlie Scarlett. Start shooting junior guard. And number 20, Miss Do It All, Savannah Darnell. And the captain, Chloe Russell, the lone senior on this team. They'll be in all white tonight. McMinn County will be in all black, trimmed in gold. Anywhere movers tip will be taken and tipped up by our good man, uh, Pinkerton. It's brought to you by Anywhere Movers. Give Alvin Jeanette a call, 865-235-4108. It will be Everett for William Blunt and Slager for McMahon County. Thank y'all for joining us on this Tuesday stand. The rain finally got out of here. Yeah. And we had a pretty good day today as uh, the weather has turned, hopefully, for the better. Robbie, they list Slager as 5'9". She looks bigger to me than 5'9". Yeah, she looks about an inch, about at least same height as uh, Allie. Ball is tipped up and controlled by Chloe Russell. And she'll hand. And there's a back court. And Robbie. She didn't get established. So no. Nope. Stan. That's a tough turnover for William Blunt. They lose the arrow and the tip. As what happened is Chloe got into front court. And Char Charlize was trying to come into front court, Robbie, but, but she didn't get. Established. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's a it, right call. It's, it's a handoff at the mid court line, but because she had not got her both feet into the front court, it is a turnover. So here comes the. Cherokees, I believe, yeah, what and, they're called. And it looks like Eliza's going to face guard Gonzalez the whole way, lay up for and the... And she got by her. That's Lexi Moore for two. Lexi Moore, yeah, Gonzalez, who she's got. Lexi Moore got by Darnell for two, and easy. Here, Blunt Pat, uh, breaks the pass. Nice step by wow. Hicks. Hicks lays it up and in. So nice move by Eliza Hicks on the baseline. If you had her first to burst, you had good odds, Stan. Yeah. <laughs> As we've knotted up two Especially to two. I didn't even know she was starting. Yeah. <laughs> and you are correct. It looks like they are going to face guard Gonzalez. Step back three. Step back three by Moore's an air ball. Sliger tried to save it, but not can't. And it will go to William Blunt. I'm pretty sure Lexi Moore's a transfer from Teleco Plains. But right now, it looks like without Gonzalez, it looks like she's going to do, she's going to have a load on herself tonight. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Blunt breaks it pretty easily, gets it to Everett in the corner. She kicks it back out to Russell, all the way around to Darnell to Scarlett. 2-2-1 two, two, back into a 2-3. Yep. So they're going to set in this 2-3. Well, here comes a shot by Darnell from the top of the key, a little short. That's a travel. And then there's a travel on the rebound by Sliger. And she rebounded it, but fell to the ground. And when she crashes to the ground, that's a travel. First quarter three-pointers tonight will be brought to you by the Party Zone at Roll Arena, your birthday specialist. Blunt will inbounds it under their basket. Darnell hits Charlize. Here comes a wide open three ball. No good. Off the back of the rim. Rebound by Moore. Four good job of stopping the ball. Yep. As they do make it set it up in front court. Moore is going to try to get it low to Sliger. Jai's help side was late. And they got the lob. And she lays it up and in. And, and then Chloe Russell picks up her dribble in trouble. Now she comes back to help her is Charlize. Scarlett and Blunt is able to break the press across the timeline. Four to two, your score early on. Nice. Uh. As shot is no good. Rebound by McMinn. They run into front court. Here comes Gonzalez, and there's charge. a travel. I mean, a, a charge. As Grant Gonzalez? Tyler was all over that one right there as Chloe Russell had set up in the lane, Robbie. Yeah, for a good second and a half before Gonzalez got there. And that's what Chloe, like we said, she uh, was seventh in the country last year and led the state of Tennessee in charges taken. And here comes Chloe breaking the press, gives it to Allie Everett. Everett back to 
Scarlett. Scarlett oh. tries to hit the back cutting. Darnell turns it over. Now restolen by Hicks. Hicks to, Ru to Russell, to go. Scarlett, to Darnell. Darnell's going to penetrate. Little floater, air ball, rebound by Everett. Goes up, draws a foul. Good job. Two was not vertical. She came down just a little. Good job of Alley on the backside offensive board. First foul of the game goes against Isabella Hooper. Been joined by Carter Bales. Yep. Rolling in on two wheels again. <laughs> Four to two, your score. And Alley cannot knock the free toss down. So the freshman will walk back to the line for a second one, though. She was in the act of shooting. Second one's pure. That one looked a lot more fluid than the first one. And she pulls the Lady Governors within one. Four to three. Man to man. Yep. With yes. face guarding. More. And they kick it over to... Four, 24. Rogers. Rogers. Rogers drains the three, so... Nobody was really on her that far out, and she drains it. So seven to three, your score. And she was able to knock that three down. And in the two, three zone is McMinn. Really extended it out onto Charlize, nice and then actually Moore picks it up and travels. Oh, they're gonna call a foul yeah. on the floor before the travel. I think she probably did get it probably did. behind. Yeah, that's gonna be on Eliza Higgs. Getting the start tonight, I was worried about where she fouled out the other night in short minutes. <laughs> She's got the job of guarding Gonzalez. Don't need to be picking up fouls like that. And here comes a wide open look by Moore. No good. And Darnell skies for the rebound. Gets it out to Hicks. Hicks wants to run, and then she's going to get her ball swatted out of bounds. Yeah, saw Charlize trailing on the other side of the court. Tried to get it to her. Good defense to knock Eli it out of bounds. Eliza always wants to go to the goal. I think she should probably just like kind of pull that out and try to yeah. see if she gets some. Because she has the idea of where to pass the ball. Ball goes into Russell. Russell spins. Ooh, good side. Can't get it over number two, Hooper. And they list Hooper as 5'9 as well. So Moore with a step back three. Good. Okay. One out of three, but dang, that's a nice shot. So 10 to three, William Blunt finds himself down at this point early on. Gets to Darnell in the front court. Darnell back to Scarlett. Scarlett looks over to Coach Kallenberg for instructions. Seems like we've seen a lot of zone this year early on for whatever Ooh, reason. Uh, Scarlett, now she's got it. As Scarlett shoots an air ball. But save it bounds to Russell. Lay it up and in. Right, can't take do that. It. You can't save it under that. So 10 to 5 as Russell on the putback as she caught it right there. As Robbie did say that one of the cardinal rules, you don't save it under your own goal. It's like an assist for the McMinn County player. And then Gonzalez falls That's the down. the third person we've seen slip. I'm telling you, and there's somebody stepped on the line over there. Robbie, I think this court, I think it's something to do with this court because it's happened the other day too. Well, I'll, uh, I mean, it might be the new finish on the court. I don't I'm know. Not, not sure. But it seems to be on this end that I, in front of the William Blunt bench more I often. Saw, uh, I saw Kevin last week on the Zamboni in the back gym <laughs> cleaning the thing, you know, the little cleaning thing. Whoa, that's oh, a high pass. But I don't, I'm assuming they clean this gym floor too. I'm sure they do. Moore pulls up three ball. Good. Somebody's going to have to stick a hand in her face. She's got eight. Eight of the 13. And Gonzalez yet to scratch. Blunt skips the press. Scarlett goes all the way through for layup. Kind of wild one-handed. Good idea. Maybe I should have used the backboard. Oh. That was a walk, yep. They're going to call They're it. get it on Gonzalez. I think Gonzalez might be getting a little frustrated. And Robbie, she looks like she's got her left hand, or yeah, her left hand ta tape. taped up. Maybe a thumb, or I don't know. A wrist might be affecting her a little bit too as well. Here comes Darnell, thought about a long three, instead skipped it over to Russell, who can't handle it. Moore goes by Scarlett, takes it all missed the way, it. missed the layup, rebound by Russell. Numbers. Russell and Hicks no, no out numbers. front. No numbers. They give it to, kick it back to Scarlett for a three ball. There it is. Man. There's your roll arena three ball. Yep. Good extra pass to find the open guy. Gets it down. Open girl, I should say. 
So William Blunt with their first three ball. Cuts it to five, 13 to eight, with 2.15 to go here in the opening quarter. Reminds you that we'll be with you here again Friday night. A big game, non-district game, as Gonzalez misses the layup. She's not happy. She is frustrated. As Moore's got it, or excuse me, Scarlett's got it. Kicks it over to Darnell for the three. Good. Make them pay when she don't run back. Yeah, she didn't run back down the court, Gonzalez, so they were playing five on four. Savannah's first bucket, and now our second party zone three ball of the first quarter. Cuts the lead back down to two, right back in this ball game. And once again, Gonzalez and Hicks. As Hicks is just not even paying attention, but Moore's getting off. She misses this one, hits the wire, I thought. Ball rebound by Everett. Everett to Scarlett, who cleared everybody out, passes over to Russell. Russell. After the ball is tipped out of her hands. So they're playing, I guess, a box in one, kind of, aren't they? I think with man concepts. Yeah, because, but here's the thing, Robbie. That time, they did what exactly what they wanted. Here come Scarlett with a long Ooh. three, good. And after the slow start, three triples have given the Lady Govs the first quarter lead. Robbie, last time, Gonzalez didn't even get in the offense. She came out here and stood at the, at the volleyball line. Well, that's fine. William Blunt will be yeah, fine with that. Yeah. We got, just play four on four if you're going to. Right. Uh, I think our four are better than their four. Our four can handle these four. There's a hand, near steal by Darnell. So now more, or Gonzalez is more active this time. And there's going to be a tie up as it goes to her. They'll get the alternate possession with the Cherokees. But so they'll see if they put Sweat on her now. And Sweat does check in for Hicks. Hicks had done a good job on her. Yeah, and she only picked up one foul in the first quarter. That's the thing I was talking to Jason with and, before the game. I said... And really, Robbie, that was on a break on the... Uh, right, uh, not even on yeah. her, yeah. yeah. She was just trying to save the layup. Transition layup. <coughs> 40 seconds to go in the period. Here comes a long three-point shot short. And that was Elliott who's checked Run in. Run out. There we go. Darnell catches it, lays it up, lays it nice in. Nice find by Charlize. Looking like a quarterback back there. Yep. 16-13. Blunt up by three. Moore comes into front court for the Lady Cherokees. She's just going to take it and just pull her way in. If Chloe takes it, it's a charge. Yeah. But she was kind of uh, kind of falling back yeah. a little bit. So the ball goes out of bounds, touch last by Russell. I like that they didn't call nothing either. Moore catches it. She's going to go for the three ball this time. Nah. No good. Rebound tip to Elliott. Back over to Moore. Six, Six seconds, seconds push to up, go. Push up. Elliott's going to fire a three from the corner. No good. Rebound, good box out by Husband. And the quarter comes to a close. But that was a good one for William Blunt. Started slow and finished it on 11-0 run, Robbie. Excellent. 16-13. We'll take a 60-second break. Going to the second. William Blunt started a back court in the gank to start the game. About had one on the inbounds. So now we've got a bench warning on Tucker. Because he was talking about that, Robbie. What happened is Chloe started in front court and went into back court. She caught it midair, I think. 
So I think on a throw in, though, that's still okay. Yeah, as long as you don't. She wasn't in front court into back court. She caught it. Right. Like, and so, but I think that's what he was wanting. There we go. And Mr. Pinkerton didn't like it. Woo, that's the third net stoppage. As Scarlett is on fire right now, and so are the Lady Governors. They've trailed 13 to 5. Second quarter three balls brought to you by Murphy Bobcat, your extra effort, effort excavator. At the end of tonight's game, Murphy Bobcat will be honoring our player of the game. And a really good find there by Russell. They brought her up to the elbow, had two guys come on her and left Charlize wide open. Here comes Moore with a long three. Good. Wow. Good. Nice. She, she will jack it from anywhere, won't she? She's got 11. It's really it's most of all the scoring for them. Here goes Russell all the way down the lane, oh. lay it up a little bit hard on the backside. I thought Sweat had it, Lost but it was jarred three. Here comes Moore about loses her dribble, her dribble pulls back three. No good this time. Nice and tip husband there. tips it over to herself, gets it to Darnell. Darnell to, to Scarlett. William Blunt's going to set skip, it up. Skip, skip it, it to Darnell. Darnell, skip it back to Scarlett. She's going to penetrate. Nice feed on the baseline to Sweat. And then we've got a foul. Is that Gonzalez? No, I don't. I think it may be 44 Slager. In, in for Gonzalez, who's somewhat frustrated, is Rogers. And William Blunt tried to throw it in. I don't know what happened right uh, there. She tried to sneak it in the middle and uh, somebody number deflected two it. Did it. Yeah, good job of them. And then Moore's going to jack another three ball. No good. good Great box out, box box out again. That's like three box out husbands had. Really good box outs here. Blunt in the front court. The Pass baseline. goes to Darnell. Darnell, the little floater, short, but husband is there. Keeps it alive. Sweat on the boards. Tough ball go to McMinn. Did Savannah get hit right there? I don't know if she got hit going through or not. Two, cur two girls checking in for William Blunt. It's going to be Izzy Kidd and um, looks to be Everett. Allie checks back in. Good to see Izzy back. Yeah, Izzy was out Friday with an ankle injury. She's got a brace on it. As number 14, Rogers, or Elliot, excuse me, Shot, uh, rebound goes long, saved in the corner by I'll tell you one thing, Coach Tucker told me as we were, as introducing myself to him, he said, we'll shoot it. You'll see us shoot it. <laughs> he ain't lying. No, they've had quite a bit of three balls go up. They are jacking them up. And Gonzalez will come back in for Elliott. Eliza Hicks checks in here for Caitlin Husband. But you remember that offense, uh, Loyola ran, yeah. right, where the, you, you, it was about, and I think the talk, no, I can't remember, someone ran it, but they want, it's all about offensive rebounding. You get as many shots as you can, but you're all about the percentage of offensive rebounds, what you're shooting for. Darnell with a step through, misses it off the glass. Rebound, though, there is the kid. Kid to Scarlett. Nice, nice pass we go. That low to Darnell, and one. I believe that may be Gonzalez. Scarlett with a nice dime. No, it was on 44 Slager. We got a Heartland roofing replay on that pass. That was nice. As Scarlett was able to hit the long bounce pass, lay it up by Darnell. And one thing I've noticed is the problem we had last week rebounding out of the zone. Yeah. McMinn County's having, we're, we're doing a good job of getting off, offensive putbacks second chance opportunities. And Darnell makes the three point play the old fashioned way. It puts William Blunt up six with about 5.15 to go here in the frame. And Gonzalez cuts to the basket, and draws a foul going up. So yeah, this is gonna be on Izzy Kid. More importantly, it's probably gonna get Aubrey Gonzalez into the, into the game. You know, she, yeah. hadn't, she hadn't really got, got established into this game yet. As she drains the three toss. Second toss by Gonzalez is good. 
and she pulls her team within four. And here's that press. This kid goes contact. behind her back. It's a lot of contact. A lot of a lot of reaching. Yeah, and hand check. And she really still don't got her hands on her. You really don't see that them allow that lot in high school ball like you do in college. And now, kid was pushing off also, yeah. but but you usually see that first contact called when it's, it's that much. Hicks penetrates in, feeds it to Darnell. Back up the kid. William Blunt will run it from the top. There comes a three ball for Charlize, no good. But on the back side, there's Kidd, gets it to Hicks. Hicks is gonna draw a foul, this time from Rogers. And a trip. Body check. Three team fouls, so. A couple fouls away from the double bonus. And I believe Rogers checked out. Clark coming in for her. Darnell on the inbounds. Gives to Scarlett. Back to Darnell. As Darnell penetrates into a lot of traffic, loses it, now ties it up, and what we got? A tie up or yep. a it tie up, so it'll go to William Blunt. Hooper will check back in for the Cherokees. Bass comes in to a legal screen on uh, Alley. Alley. I see that a lot on that inbounds play, Robbie. Yeah, she's just trying to create enough separation yep. and it's to get Scarlet open, it's which they little, normally do. Yeah, a little subtle move to the right right there. So that will go as a turnover offensive foul for William Blunt and Moore will bring it up. Hicks, once again, face guarding Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, really frustrated, throwing her arms up like, there she cuts the back cut, she and she can't it. handle the pass. And Everett's there to pick it up. If we hurry, we can get a shot at least three. And here comes Darnell with the three ball. Off Good. the bounce. Murphy Bobcat three ball. I'm not sure what's going on. Gonzalez is clearly frustrated, Robbie, but I don't like the fact she don't run back down the court yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. She gets. Oh, she just threw a little shove off on a hitch down in the corner. There comes another three ball, this time by Moore. Who, Jeez. Good she answer. Just we might just need a triangle and two stand. Yeah, exactly, on her. Face guard her. As there's a bad pass, it's going to be intercepted at the or deflected, but then a tie. Up. Hicks takes, Hicks it, from takes her. it from Gonzalez, and Gonzalez is walking back up the court. Still walking. Here comes a three. Bottom. Good. And that's timeout. McMinn County. No, I think it might have been called by Coach K. Oh, I it believe was? it was. Okay. Thirty second timeout by William Blunt, brought to you by Barner Burger, home of the two for $9 quarter pounders with cheese. Stan, that was another three ball. This one by Darnell, her third. Charlize has three. And that's a total, that's six as a team. And Gonzalez gets the ball taken from her. She didn't just jog back that. She walked back that time because she could have got back in play because it wasn't a very fast, fast break. She could have got there able to deny that pass at the top of the key. That's twice that William Blunt's hit a three where she hadn't got back because they've had the open man. But, but five three-pointers for McMahon County also. So that, uh, That's what's really keeping them in the game. And more. But, uh, Scarlett has nine and Savannah Darnell has 14. And Darnell's doing the right thing right here, extending extending out, trying to make sure she can't put up any more of those long shots. Yeah. Elliot got a look at the top. I think that's what that timeout was. It's As, like, make someone else beat us besides Moore. Well, Moore did beat him again right there as she got to the lane and she was going up and drew the foul, so she's going to get two more. So three fouls to three fouls, but this was in the act of shooting, they'll say. I see Grant Tyler and... Gonzalez was having a conversation with him. Maybe about the physicality, I don't know. She just, I don't know. First toss is no she, good. She's breathing quite hard too. Second toss by Moore, good. Well, she came up 
kind of lightly after the physical uh, steal. Carry right there. Almost. There's a bad pass all the way across, and Gonzalez picks it up for McMinn. She wants to go all the way to the rack, and she's going to draw a foul from Everett. She's not under control. We should have just let her go. And she's going to her offhand. Two fouls on Alley now. Easier said than done, ain't it? Yeah. She misses her toss. So it comes off the rim. 2.15 to go, blown up by six. They were down 13 to five. They went on an incredible run. I think it was like a 14-0 run. And missed at one them point. both. Missed them both. And rebound by Chloe Russell. She's guarded by Moore in rear court. Get it to Darnell. Charlize drives baseline. Gets it to Husband. Husband's going to fire a three ball. Good. Hand in her face. Doesn't matter. Gets it to go. 31-22. So Husband gets on the three act. It's a good rotation on that high arching ball. There you and there's go. another steal, Hicks this time. Well, it goes back to Gonzalez, gets it back and lays it in. Yeah, that was a fluke play. So somehow Moore, it was deflected back to Moore and she hit the Gonzalez down low. Darnell's gonna fire a three. This one's gonna be short. Rebound by McMinn. They trail by seven with a minute 25 to go. Stay up on her. And, oh, another three ball, this time by Elliott. And all of a sudden, the 6-0 run, or 5-0 run, excuse me, by the Lady Cheat Keys. But oh, don't matter, Stan. Murphy Bobcat three ball for Charlize. No, Lady Charlize goes definitely. said, I'm the answer. And they're definitely feeling hot. Moore penetrates in, gives it off. There comes a uh, foul. It's a shooting foul and two from on Darnell. Savannah. Clark will go to the line for looks the like, Lady Keys. Looks like Izzy Kidd will probably check in for her. Don't want her to pick up another cheap one before the end of the half. Yeah, certainly with 50.7 to go. She rattles off. Excuse me, Sweat's going to check in for Hicks here. Looks like Izzy Kid was set to check in for Darnell, but uh, doesn't. Being, being in offensive position and a veteran player like Savannah, she's probably not going to, or offensive possession, yeah. She's she's smart enough to stay out of foul trouble. Second toss is good, 34-28. Blunt can hold for one if they want to. They break the press in the front court. Give it to Scarlett. Scarlett looking at the high post to Tell you what would be good is to hit a three that uh, rips the net, hangs the net up, and then we get to get, bring a defensive sub in. There we Still, go. There's oh. a, back, a back side cut going up, drawing the foul. He might be able to get the shooter out if he, after this right here, if she makes both. Yeah. Yes. Darnell will go to the line. I think that was Hooper. Her second. Yeah, it looked like Elliot tripped um, down near the three point line in the corner. Left Darnell open inside. Able to get to the line as she knocks down her first. I don't see anybody down there. Has he got anybody at the table? Uh, doesn't look like it. Going to let her play it out. Darnell with her second toss. Good. 16 first half points for SD. 30 seconds to go in the half. Here comes Moore and the Cherokees. She's just gonna come up and jack a three and miss it. Good box out again by Husband. Oh, she was on the line. Yep, good call. Ball was deflected by Gonzalez and she was standing on the line. So that's out of bounds, dead ball. William Blunt with 19 seconds to go. So we'll see what William Blunt's gonna do here against the press. Obviously try to break it. Get to the middle. And they get it across to Russell, Russell. Going to pull up, floater, a little six footer, no good, but rebound Sweat. by Sweat. Oh, Knocked out of bounds, touch glass by her, eight seconds. So William Blunt will be able to set their defense. They're going to pick up a little full court pressure. Moore, make Moore give it up. No, they're not. She's just going to shred them and lay it up and lay it in as the quarter comes to a close. That was poor half court defense. 
Full court defense. Full court defense, I'm sorry. Yeah, full court defense. And she went the distance, Robbie, and lays it off the glass with a second left. Your score at the end of one half of basketball, William Blunt, though, leads McMinn County 36-30. We'll take a two-minute break. Back at William Blunt High School, you see the William Blunt dance team. Actually, this is the cheerleaders. Dance team just went. The cheerleaders are up and down. This is a Heartland Roofing halftime show. And it finds William Blunt on top of the McMinn County Lady Cherokees, 36-30. Your score, as William Blunt got behind 13-5, and then they went on a barrage of hitting a lot of three-point shots. and. Uh, Carter, a lot of scoring from Savannah and Charlize as we move right into Stats with Stan. Stats with Stan brought to you by Tim Tipton. Give Tim a call at, for all your realty needs. All right, thank you, Stan. We'll go ahead and start with the visiting team. Uh, leading scorer for them, Lexi Moore, 17. She's shot a lot of three balls. She's hit a few of them. Um, and then she had Let's hang tight right here just a minute. Let's do the greed. Feed, greed or feed that Scott Count Scott on. Oh, yeah. Looks like it's going to be uh, Stewart here, Hunter Stewart. And he's, he's going to go, go for the greed. Greed. Student section, you're out. It's all for Hunter Stewart. If he makes it, he's got three shots for $200. I got to tell you, and it's just going to be greed all the time. Is it? Is that maybe have a shot? Oh, oh man, off he almost the rim. hit it. Now, if they hit it though, does it go back down to? Yeah, it does. Okay. But but I think if it keeps going higher, oh, oh, just nicked the front of the the rim there. So he's he's had two pretty good ones. By far the best shots we've had since he implemented this contest three weeks ago, or three games oh, ago. Oh man, zero oh, for three. All of them really close. Yeah. And so go back. $250 Friday night against Heritage, so it, we'll see. It should just keep going up to, uh, with greed. Um, anyway, so. Back to our stats with yeah, Stan. Back to the Lady Cherokees. Lexi Moore, 17 points in the first half. 
lit it up from behind the arc. She shot a lot, so I don't quite know what her percentage was, but uh, she got a, she got a lot to go down. Their second leading scorer, Aubrey Gonzalez, with four points. A um, couple girls with three. We've got Elliot and Rogers with three. One girl with two, that being Lily Sliger, and then one from Hannah Clark on the lone free throw that she made. Moving to William Blunt now, leading score for them, without a doubt, Savannah Darnell, 16 points. So a really good first half showing from her is I think she's already near her average uh, points per game total. Behind her, Charlie Scarlett with four big three balls with 12. Uh, let's see, we got one girl with three, that being Caitlin Husband on the lone three ball that she made. And then we've got a couple girls with two, that being Chloe Russell and Eliza Hicks. And then rounding out the scoreboard, or the, the score sheet, excuse me, Allie Everett with one on a free throw attempt. So that was Stats with Stan brought to you by Tim Tipton. Yep. Uh, make sure to give him a call. Office number 865-984-1111 or his cell 865-806-7255. We'll take another two-minute break, and we'll be back here at William Blunt High School. You're watching on Gov Nation Network and listening on Voice of Champions. All right, back at William Blunt High School, Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium on a Tuesday night. Crowd starting to fill up, student section starting to fill up as William Blunt girls lead 36-30, Robbie. Yeah, Friday night's opponent stand will be the Heritage uh, Mountaineers. They're playing Maryville tonight for the second time. I know, that's hard before, to believe. Before December 5th. As that is a non-district game now, so I guess they just had to fit it in where they could. And, you know, maybe not be able to fit it in on Fridays after because of the district schedules and so yeah, forth. That'll, they played, hurt, that'll hurt some of the gates. They played on the Tuesday that they got out for Thanksgiving, so that was kind of like a Friday. But tonight, I don't see that. But anyway, regardless, I think I would have tried to find a Thursday or maybe even a Saturday. But Either it, way, we know it's going to be a tough matchup uh, in the girls' action for sure. The boys could could be a competitive game, uh, but but Mer Heritage girls only beat Maryville girls by seven the first time. 
Heritage or Maryville boys were won that game, and so we know that Rick Howard would bring a very good girls team in here as they always does on Friday night. So Jason Kallenberg and company will have to be ready to handle some full court pressure. Stan, y'all talked about Gonzalez at the half with how she only had four. I don't know if you touched on that, but yeah, I'd say she, she's probably closer to the 18 points per game range. So what a job Eliza Hicks did on her in the first half. Yeah, really face guarding her all night. Eliza definitely one of the most athletic girls on the on the court, so it's nice to see that athleticism work in your favor. As they'll get the ball to start the third quarter, will the Cherokees. And Hicks is back out there on Gonzalez. As Handoff goes to Moore. Another thing, Moore hasn't had her shirt tucked in the whole game. I was getting ready to say. The whole game. And, and Frederick would not be happy if he was watching this broadcast. Ball gets kicked back out to Elliott. Elliott hits the back cutting Gonzalez and she trips. Yeah, Eliza tripped her up and yeah. she hit the ground pretty hard. But incidental contact, yeah, but I mean, you gotta call it. And she appears to be hurt, getting up oh. slow. I think they called that on Russell. I'd love to be able to tell you, but I don't see it on the board. So what, so what Tyler he announced. announced, and I believe Gonzalez is going to go out of the game. Uh, she hit the court pretty hard. As, uh, Actually, Coach Tucker's going to call timeout and hopefully get her a chance to get, get her... Uh, Knee bandaged up or whatever, see if she'll give it a go. This one brought to you by Trinity Chiropractor, where you get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. We'll take a 30 second break. Back at William Blunt High School, here comes the inbounds. Moore, her shot got blocked. She gets it back, goes behind the three-point line. Right no out. good. Here comes Darnell's. Darnell's going to get a wide-open layup. Too easy. She's going to hit it. Another assist for Scarlett. So Darnell, 18 points out in the here the early third quarter. And it's it's crazy, guys. It doesn't matter if she has to take a few dribbles. She's still going to be faster than you. Yeah. McMinn has it. They give it over to Hooper. Hooper gives back to Moore. Ball spot by Darnell. Yeah, off Black. Off Sliger, out of bounds. Blunt will get it. Yeah, without and without Gonzalez, somebody's going to have to step up. And we know Elliott hit one three in the first half. Rogers hit a three. Clark hit a free throw. And Sliger only had two, Stan. So. Yeah, well, all they've got to do is, is key in on on more now with uh, Gonzalez out. Yeah, we. That's all we need to yeah. do. Yeah. You feel like if we as stop her, oh. as ever catches it and collides, no foul, but out of bounds off McMinn County. Is it still looking at the trainer? Still working on her right knee. Is Gonzalez? So that's probably not a great look when they're looking at that. But uh, we didn't. We I don't know if we even looked at the replay, but. It looked like she just hit hard onto the ground. Yeah. We didn't see if it was a non-contact. Right. I mean, it was just an inadvertent trip as she was cutting through. As that ball, is a foul went against. It's on the floor. It should be on the floor. Yeah, on the floor there. The first against the Cherokees with 6.29 to go. I didn't get the number. 
Well, Gon- Gonzalez has been playing with uh, two yeah. knee pads, right. so not sure if she's got some sort of bruise there. Um, Russell. Russell's going to fire uh, a three. No good. Rebound, long rebound to Moore. Moore double dribbled. They didn't call it. Anyway, she goes by, lays it up, lays it in. She caught. She it was dribbled. like a control dribble, and then she took off. Yeah, dri- yeah I saw that too. On the rebound, she, she dribbled on the rebound and then caught it in both hands and then took off. 38-32, your score. Now she's face guarding Charlize. And Charlize gets it way out at the foul line, or at the half line, I'm sorry. Count is on. Gives it to to uh, Russell. Russell's going to penetrate in. The traffic no good. Tipped by oh, Darnell. Nice. She may have got fouled. And here comes a three ball, this time by Rogers, a long oh, three, and she connects. So here come the Cherokees, 38 35. Darnell penetrates past her girl, picks her dribble up, draws a foul. Through a little elbow, oh, there's Rogers is just going to be technical. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's going to knock up Darnell too. No, I think he's just giving warnings. Okay. Oh, you just can't do that. You can't. You can't try and show up the the player here. What? I think it was a double technical. Is what she called. Oh, well, maybe Savannah had said something that we can't see up here. Um, Who called double tech? Grant Tyler did. Oh. But they don't, they don't shoot a double. You don't shoot a double. So there's a, there's a Savannah foul on the floor me. from Rogers. Then Rogers gets another personal, and then Savannah gets a personal. I think is what happened. Okay. That is Rogers' so, third personal foul. Oh, so I had a foul wrong yeah. earlier. That's why Jason didn't take her out. Right. So regardless, 5.16 to go. Where are we waiting on? Okay, we were waiting on the reporting, I think. So team fouls are now two and three. There it is. Yep. Yep. Husband with the three ball. I'm telling you guys, she's shooting the ball well. Yep. That's a bow and door service. Your best first impression. Three ball the third quarter. There comes a long three ball. This time, no good. Rebound. That was from Moore, but somehow Sliger got the rebound. And gives to Elliott, who drains it. And then David Tucker the wants ball, a timeout. The ball bounced really high. Like, we were there, but it bounced over our heads. South Park Storage and Penske Truck Rentals at the end of William Blunt Drive and 411 South. Visit them during this timeout. thought somebody else was going to go get it. Back at William Blunt High School, Darnell gets the basketball to come in. Gives over to Russell. Russell's going to bring it up. Blunt up by three with 4.40 to go. Russell thought about nice. it. He gives the husband for another three ball. This time short, but Darnell's there. Score. Darnell's going to score, lay it up. No good. Rebound by Russell. Just can't dribble down yep. there. Dives uh, on the floor. Jump ball. Actually going to get a timeout. Uh, great hustle there by Chloe Russell, diving to get that ball and avoid a turnover. East Tennessee Insurers timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Your local independent insurance agency. Yeah, Chloe got a good job of offense rebound, but she dribbled down there in all that traffic, and that's what caused the uh, loose ball. You see it right here on her instant replay. Loses it. She dove down there and got it, and then the timeout. I think that Jason Darnell called the timeout from the bench. Callenberg. Jason Darnell. Jason Callenberg. <laughs> as Jason Callenberg called the timeout as he was right beside Grant Tyler, and Grant acknowledged him the timeout. 
and gave it to him. So 41-38, your, your score at 427 to go here in the third period. And a tight one. And Gonzalez is back on the bench. She had left the bench momentarily. She is back now. I'm not sure she's going to come back in. If Russell gets to the right, can't make it. Rebound by Moore. They're, yes. they're chipping away here. Got a chance to tie with a three. And you notice they've done most of this without Gonzalez. It's Moore, though, kicks it. She then fouled. she fouls. So lost the ball. And she kicked it to Scarlett. And it picks up the foul. Yeah, it really just slid into Scarlett's leg there. That's one of those unfortunate, yeah. like, didn't mean to type fouls. But that's four fouls now, so bonus final four minutes if we get to the foul line or get a foul call, we can get to the foul line. Kid, who's checked back in from William Blunt, gets it, going to bring it up for the Lady Governors. 41-38, four minutes left in the third. Husband to Kid. Kid thought about a three, instead penetrates, little runner, good. good. There we go. Found the soft spot in the D. Izzy, I think her first two points it tonight. It is. Puts William Blunt up by five. Nice hands. Ball's deflected to Elliott. Stay up. Here comes Moore, jacking a long one, and it's good. Why would you back off of it? Another timeout right here by David Tucker, 43-41. Robbie, this timeout is brought to you by... Yeah, Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. We'll take a 30-second break with them. Back at William Blunt as Gonzalez has checked back in for the Lady Cherokees. And it looks like it was possibly just a uh, knee hit the ground. Yeah, probably be a little sore for a couple of days, maybe a bruise as she guards Kid out front with the basketball. Goes to Hicks, oh, Hicks walked. almost walks, gives it to Everett. Kicks it back to Darnell, to Kid. Kid's gonna fire up a three ball, good! She set the puppies. Took her time and stroked it for the Bowen Door Service three ball. So, Kid, five quick points for the Lady Governors. And they're back up by five. As Gonzalez gets it away, away from the basket. Oh, yeah, Almost. No call. And they get it to Clark. Clark's Gosh. three pointer goes. Hit the front of the rim and got the soft roll. 46 44, your score. Blunt back, still by, up by two. Ball goes to the high post to, to Hicks. Hicks turnaround jumper, no good. Rebound by Everett. Gives to Kid. Kid steps back behind the three line. Good. Oh, Izzy, Kid, have a night. No one went out to guard her. She'll put that up. But another second chance opportunity after the Alley Everett rebound. Two minutes to go. Here goes Moore. Wild shot, no uh, good, but to rebound it right there is Hooper. Again, it's on the floor. Sliger gets it. Hicks. Battle, rebound, going to be a jump ball. Kid was in there. William Blunt will get the arrow. Thought they got the last one. Maybe not. You can see, started. Gonzalez the is going back out. So she, I don't. She may not be able to go. Is that yeah. another timeout? Yeah, timeout by Coach Callenberg. All right. It's a circulation station timeout. Relieving pain with technology. Get three free treatments when you mention you listen to AM 1470 Truth Radio.
Back at William Blunt High School, Marvin L. Boren Gymnasium, Hicks catches it for William Blunt. Penetrates oh. in to Darnell. Darnell's shot is blocked. Alley. Alley Everett ties up. The arrow this time will go to McMinn. But it's a good job of putting her hand in there and it'll it'll steal a possession later. Yep. So 151 to go. It will be McMinn's basketball trailing by five. Moore walks it up, gives over to Elliott. Elliott to Clark, the handoff to Moore. As Darnell disrupted that a little bit. Don't even back off. No, Savannah, don't back off. And she's just going to pull up and shoot the three. No good. And Sliger tips it around. Get Hooper gets it. Gets it to Moore. Moore's penetrates in. And they're going to call a foul on Everett. Ever. Ever. Now, lucky that ball didn't fall by Lexi Moore. Slacking off around the perimeter. You can't do that. She's going to put it up. Yeah, she's got 22. Uh, I'm sorry, 25 points. Robbie, you're right. Then that shot goes up. Hooper and Slager are just crashing the boards like you wouldn't believe in there, and they try to kick it back out, don't they? Yeah. The ball's deflected out of bounds. Please stay with McMinn County. Husband is going to check in for Allie. Allie's got three fouls, so she'll go to the bench for the remainder of the third. We'll need her in the fourth. And this ball comes into Clark. Clark. Penetrates in, ball's tipped out by Kidd. Into the corner to Elliott. Elliott shot no Inside good, but position. there's Sliger. Oh, oh the block. Got the block. Caitlin with the block. Caitlin Husband and Kidd picks it up with a minute to go here in the third. Here goes Kidd. I thought she's going to fire another one, but Chloe Russell will Ooh. miss everything. Rebound by Sliger. Stop the ball. She is hands off the board. The Moore is going to pull up. Shoot the three. No good. But right there's Elliott. Elliott kicks it out to Clark. Clark shot no good. But there's Sliger. Over to Moore, who about couldn't handle it. Almost went out of bounds. So this is the third possession. Third shot. Charge. And the charge right yep. there is Moore ran right over Russell, who was set up in the lane again. Two on her. So she's not Seems in trouble. Seems like she's had more than two. That's she's the, had both of them here in the last. That's that was. I thought it was, I checked. I had to make sure to listen. 35 seconds to go. William Blunt will get into the front court. To Russell, she about loses it. Took her eye off. It gives the kid. Kid over to husband. Husband wants to fire another three. No good. But there's Darnell on the backside. Gives to Russell. Russell penetrates in. Kicks it back out to Scarlett. 15 We're seconds fine. to go. We're fine. 15 seconds, and we got possession kid to with start it. the fourth. Yeah, I'd just go two, two for one right here. As William Blunt will hold it, Ke uh, husband thought about it. Instead oh. gives it to Kid. Three seconds. Darnell's going to get one off at the buzzer. No good. And the third period comes to a close. But another good one for William Blunt as they play pretty much even with them. I think they got out scored 14-13. We're going to the fourth. Blunt leads by five. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we are set for fourth quarter action here at the Marv. William Blunt. 21 threes combined stand between these two wow. teams. 11 for William Blunt, 10 for McMinn County. 
as Russell gets to the there rack, we go. spinning, churning inside and laying it off the glass. Ooh, you look fancy, 25. <laughs> Wimbledon up by seven here early in the fourth. That's a quiet night, though, for Chloe. That's just four points for her. Here comes Moore. It's not been a quiet night for her. Oh, she gets it to it. Elliott. Elliott, three-point shot, no good. Rebound Run. by up, Chloe. Scarlett. I'm uh, telling you, Elliott, Robbie, she hit an early three. but She's I don't hit think two. She's hit two. But she she's hit one in the third. She yeah, I don't know if that's a good her thing. last couple. It's kind of like that Draymond Green effect. Yeah. You know, like the other night, he hit a few, and then at the end of the game, they gave it to him for the win instead of Steph Curry shooting it. Here's Chloe Russell with the three ball. No good on the backside. There's Flagger to rebound it. Seven minutes to go. William Blunt up by seven. Moore comes across, fires it over to Elliott. Gonzalez back in, Stan. And right there is a turnover for McMahon. They just lost it out of bounds. She's toughing it out, but she's not not near probably. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say she's at 80%. She's going to come right back out. Yeah, she's not. She's but that might have been offense for defense right there. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, he could be doing that as many times as he can this quarter. 6.56 to go. Chloe gets it across. They're going to call it a legal screen on husband. I didn't, I didn't really it. see it. She, <laughs> did she move? I didn't think she moved. She kind of like tried to do the pivot thing. Yeah. We'll see the replay, maybe, maybe not. Right. But either way, it was, it was, that's one of those that they could call just about every play. Well, it'll be turnover, and it'll be McMahon's basketball. Moore at the top of the key. That As one was Darnell tipped. deflected that one, but Slager's right there to catch it. And then it's lost out of bounds, touched last by Husband. As Hooper and Husband battled, I'm telling you, on the offensive end, Hooper and Slager seem like they Here's get your every. On the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. She, she is illegal. And there's a jump ball as Hicks is able to tie up Slager. It'll stay down here. 626 to go. This might be the most jump balls we've seen in a while, guys. Like an elementary game. I had one the other night, six straight possessions. Oh, God. With like 30 <laughs> seconds going off the clock. There goes Charge. Moore with her third. Oh! oh! How? Pinkerton says block. I must have looked at it late because we'll see the we'll replay. We'll see the replay it, right I here. I thought, I thought she was set, but we'll look at it. Now it's late. We didn't get it all right there. So Moore's going to go to the line. Two Look. shots coming. Misses it. What well, called a break on that one? Actually, Moore has 22. I said she had 25. She only has 22. 17 of those in the first half. Chloe's second foul, team second. Moore gets the rattle on the other one, cut it to six, and her 23rd. Here comes Russell, racing into front court. Gives it to Husband. Husband tries to get the high low to Everett. But Everett might stole it. it back. And here comes McMinn. Moore comes across, Darnell. They're going to give it to Clark. She shoots it. No good. I'd let her shoot. And her wow. and Everett collide. Yeah, Ellie, or Everett got one in the chin. Charlize with a long three. No good. Rebound battle. Darnell gets it. Goes up. Draws a foul. So blunt battling as well. This yeah, is going to be this on. This is probably the most offensive rebounds we've had all year. Yeah, it's been good to see. This foul on Katie Elliott. That will be her first. And Savannah, who had a quiet third quarter, just two points. So she's sitting on 18 for the game. Stays oh, perfect from the line. Four for four. They lead by seven. That's William Blunt. 52-45. Darnell second toss. Looks good. Gets the row, hit the front of the rim, and then clicked in. William Blunt up by eight with 5.45 to go. Walking it across. It's definitely not offense defense for Gonzalez because no. she didn't go back in, Stan. Moore, and give it to Clark. Clark's going to jack a long three. No good. Easy on my backboard. I'm telling you, I would take that any day over Moore shooting it. Yeah, for sure. As they give it to Everett. Everett with the little go get it, go get two it. shot. Two, uh, she got her on board. Yeah, ran her, her down. 
is it was a two shot or the, a two point shot is what I'm trying to say. No good, but she was able to run a rebound down. Russell gives a give and go to her. Block. She goes up. It's blocked she out of bounds. To to stay with William Blunt. Coach Kallenberg really wanting a foul right there. I don't think it was a foul. I think they were, it was a good clean block. 5.04 to go. William Blunt with it. E. As they get it to Russell. Russell That's goes around. That's Somebody got her on the Two. wrist. May have been Hooper. It was, says Grant Tyler. Two shots coming here for Chloe. Chloe's first trip to the line tonight. Usually she shoots quite a few free throws. First one off the front of the rim, no good. Exactly five minutes left in this one. Boys action to follow. McMinn County Cherokees went to state last year, Stan. I don't think they're quite as good this year. Second toss is good. Well, we beat them by 25 and 15 last year when they went to state, so. They're 3A. No, right. no. They're 4A? 4A. Okay. Well, they're, they're 5A in football, right? Right. As Charlize gets a long rebound, tried to give it to Everett going up the court, re stolen by Moore. Charlize probably should have kept that. And she anticipated her coming yep. up. She didn't see the girl coming from behind. And they get a long shot this time by number Peterson. one, Peterson, who's checked into the game. And she's hit a big three ball. And then, Blunt partnership three balls here in the fourth quarter where careers and education come together. One timeout left, I think, is what Pinkerton just told Coach Tucker. This timeout brought to you by Bonnerberger, home of the two for $9 quarter pounders for cheese. 30-second break. Four thirty-one to go here in this fourth quarter action. This very competitive girls game. Three on three right there. Not three on three as in three men on three girls or three on three, but number three on number three. And a foul by Pat Peterson. And it's gonna be her first. As Scarlett had to give it up. Two on the team. So still about 420 left here. William Blunt, 54, 48. Ball comes in to Everett, who makes a good pass, but I like the way she improved her angle, made the bounce pass, but Russell couldn't handle it. 4-10 to go. Here comes Moore. Just pretty much played with her shirt partially untucked. Well, it blends in so yeah. well. It kind of... And there's a backcourt foul, I believe, on Sliger, as William Blunt was able to steal it. And Sliger with a foul should send William Blunt. No, it's no. just four. Okay, it's just four. So the next one, both teams will be in the bonus. No. Uh, according to the scoreboard. No, it's the period. Never mind. You're right. Only two on William Blunt. So they've got a couple to give. Ooh. As Russell gets it to Everett. Kicks it back out to Russell. 3.45 well, to work, go. Let's work and try to get us a layup here. Or a clean three. Goes to Hicks. Hicks into Everett. Back to Hicks, to Russell. Yeah, we don't have to be in a hurry. Yeah. They're slumping off. Yeah, William Blunt doing a really good job of chewing some clock here yeah. with the lead. And I tell you, the, the second half defense of face guarding, more face guarding Scarlett, she's only gotten one shot up here in the second half. As it comes to Hicks, Hicks is going to go back to Russell. Back over to Hicks. So Coach Kallenberg is going to force now they have to come off McMahon of Scarlett. to do something Scarlett different. Scarlett relocates to the corner. There it is. it is. 
She's going to have a wide open three. That's Bottom. got him. You can't get that's the second shot. She's hit five triples. And this one is the blunt partnership one. And, Ga and Jason Kallenberg dictated that right there. As he made them come and, and try, double team yeah, and uh, leave Scarlett. Moore is going to fire wet. one from the volleyball line. Miss everything. Rebound by William Blunt. There's too much standing for McMahon County's offense. Nice feed to oh. Hicks. Hicks misses it, but Eight the ball's deflected out of bounds by Sliger. Stays with William Blunt. Husband's going to check in here. She's going to check in for Eliza Hicks. It's like 14, Elliot, and 12. Time is out. it? Yeah, Elliot and Clark will check back in. Lady Ghost call another timeout. I think they'll be left with one. Trinity Chiropractor, where you get your life forces switched on with Dr. Evan Butcher. 30 second break. Two thirty to go here. William Blunt clinging to a nine-point lead as they've actually expanded it out here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, as they only led 49-44, Four, I think. Four, yeah, yeah, going to this quarter. So they've done a pretty a good job, and then Jason Kallenberg is going to like milk the clock. Ooh. Oh, there's a bad pass that's why, stolen why by are you Elliot. To get rid of it so quick. Elliot's going to pull up and shoot a two, two, no good. Rebound, Slager and Russell. Touch last by Russell, 2.07 to go. It will stay with McMinn. I'm gonna let anybody on the floor shoot other than Moore. Did they have six people in? Yeah, they did. But they had a the sub Pinkerton's come in. Pinkerton's hand was up. Okay. The ball, so it didn't come, it wasn't that whole possession, right? No, okay. no. She just subbed out and All right. he gave the ball to the player. 2.05 to go, ball's deflected out of bounds right here in front of the McMinn bench, so it'll be inbounds. Again, more hand up, and I mean okay. That's an extra step, and out of bounds off of William Blunt with 158. I'm almost content with let her shoot a layup Don't rather than this that. right here because she catches it and almost fired a three. Gives it to Clark. Clark's going to give it to Elliot. Elliot air almost air ball. Just barely drew rim. Yep, really good job right there by Darnell, not going underneath after the pass, staying with, staying with Moore so she couldn't put up a shot. Darnell goes to the basket, draws a foul. I think it's on four. Who has entered the game. Sewell. Sewell. Sophomore. Her first, and we're a couple free throws staying away. Yep. It's Darnell. Makes the first. That's a three possession, actually a four possession game, Robbie. She has what on the night? She is up to 21. So 21 points for Savannah. 137 to go. And second one is no good. Rebound by Moore. And Moore draws a foul going on the floor. up from. Let's see. Yep, on the floor. Good foul. Charlize. It was on the floor, they said. So, Charlize is second. Team's third. So, William Blunt still got one more to give before the bonus. Elliott penetrates. Gets it out to Clark. Clark penetrates and draws a foul from Everett. So, two shots coming here. With a buck 23, this is what you don't want to do if you're William Blunt. Yeah, Everett didn't go straight up right there. Went into the body a little bit. Is that Alley's fourth? Yes. So that'll put Clark to the line for two. 
knocks the first one down. Gets it back to a three-point game. She's got five points. 58-49, your score. Second toss, no good, but rebound by Pet Peterson. Gives it over to Clark. Clark hands off to Sewell. Sewell skips it to Peterson. Peterson oh, thought fast. about a three. She's going to lose it on the ground. It's going to be a tie-up. Arrow goes to William Blunt. I don't remember a jump ball before. Yep, yeah. it is going to be William Blunt's basketball. And that, my friends, is an adios. Tonight's adios brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Give Nate a call. As William Blunt is going to move to five and three on the season, as we are now under five minutes or one minute to go. Darnell. Want to go all the way, shoot the layup. Ooh, oh, can't get the rolls. It bounced around, but she'll go to the line for two tosses. Foul's going to be on Peterson. Try to get Eliza Hicks up tonight. Darnell's first toss is short. As we give her the player of the game tonight, Stan, for her job that she did on Bobcat or Murphy Bobcat player of the game. The job she did on Gonzalez. Savannah missed them both. And a loose ball on the floor will be Chloe Russell tying up with Peterson. It'll go to McMinn County this time. It's three free throws in a row for Savannah after starting six for six. So 50.7 to go. Here comes Moore. Somebody needs to get in her face. She'll fire it from anywhere. Dribbling away a lot of times. She's going to try to penetrate. We have a three. They're not going to call it. Kid or somebody got a three off right there. Kid looked like she fouled her. They didn't call it. Elliot puts the back, puts it back up, and I think David Tucker may have used his last time out. Yep. So 28.5 to go. Seven-point game. And the timeout brought to you by South Park Storage and Penske Truck Rentals at the end of William Blunt Drive at 411 South. We'll take this final one of the game. William Blunt runs the old out-of-bounds play where Chloe throws it to Scarlett, back to Chloe. And McMahon will force the foul with 21.6 to go. This is all academic right here for the Lady Governors. Some stat padding. As Blunt moves to five and three on the season, picks up a big win over a 4A school. Got two in a row. Two big wins in a row. Yeah, over 4A schools. Going in to match up against Crosstown rival from Heritage Friday night. And Chloe hits both. Nine point lead for the Lady Governors. Moore gets it. Don't think McMinn can stop it again yeah. as Moore's going to drive. Lay a little floater is good. 10 seconds to go. Goes to She's Scarlett. She's getting fouled. She gets in back court. As now they call a foul on Elliott with 3.2. Yeah, I thought Charlize got fouled multiple times in the corner. Instead, they call it on Elliott. That gives Chloe a couple or a chance for a couple more, and she knocks the first one down. I think she's getting close to double digits now. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. She'll be at nine. She makes this. 61-53, 62-53. Seven points all in the fourth quarter. Seven points in the fourth quarter. Moore's going to get it, and she's not even going to try a shot. And the quarter or the buzzer expires. 
The Lady Governors moved to five and three. They are now on a two game winning streak and getting ready for Heritage. We'll take a two minute break and we'll be back here to recap this game on Gov Nation Network and Voice of Champions. Back at William Blunt High School for the post-game show, Heartland Roofing post-game show. William Blunt victorious again tonight as they defeated the McMinn County Lady Cherokees by a score, Robbie, of 62-53, I believe. Yes. As this is the Heartland Roofing post-game show, as I said, uh, A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau and a five-star rating on Google. So make sure you give Nate a call. And we'll get into the Stats with Stan segment. Stats with Stan, of course, we want to thank Tim Tipton, our local realtor here. Give Tim a call. He's very experienced in this area. He knows anything, what you need or what you want. What you, he can work on that for you. Robbie, you have the final statistics here in, or the final scoring in this girls' contest. Yes, I do, Stan. Thank you. As William Blunt victorious tonight, they were led in scoring by Savannah Darnell, 21 points. She had 16 of those in the first half. Then it was Charlie Scarlett with 15. She had 12 of those in the first half. So scoring slowed down a little bit in the second half, but still a tremendous job by them two girls. Chloe almost got to double digits as she finishes with nine, seven in the fourth quarter to seal this game from the foul line. Eight came from Izzy Kidd and Stan. That's, that might be Izzy's career high. 
Uh, yeah. But hitting two three-pointers was big for her. I think so. They were key, too, Robbie. They were very in that, timely. In that, yes, in that stretch. Six points for hu husband, two points for Hicks, the first two points of the game, and then one point for Allie Everett for a total of 62 points for the victorious Lady Govs. McMinn County, they were led in scoring by Lexi Moore. She had 25. Nobody else got to double digits as Elliott got to seven. Six points from Rogers, four, five points from Clark, four points from Gonzalez, three points from Peterson, and two points for Slager. That's a total of 53. That was not enough, but Lady Govs victorious tonight. 62-53, we'll take a one or two minute break and come back with more here. Preview the boys and talk to Eliza Hicks. All right, we're back here for the post-game show. Brought to you by Heartland Roofing. We're joined by sophomore Eliza Hicks. She is our Murphy Bobcat player of the game. Eliza, you come out, you get the first two points of the game. That was your only two, but that was not your job tonight. You had a job. It was stopping Gonzalez, and you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Talk about the effort that you had to come each play with her. Um, every time I knew she was fixing the back door cut, I knew that I had to shut that down. She's very quick, and... She's got, I mean, majority of their points in most of the game, so I knew that I had to shut that down because that was what would be best for the team. Before she got hurt there, she did get hurt, I think, in the third quarter, but she seemed to be very frustrated in the second quarter, and I think that you kind of had gotten under her skin a little bit. Was there a little bit of... Uh, Gamesmanship? Yeah, going on there? Um, a little bit, <laughs> but I just... I don't know. I didn't really – she didn't really say anything. I just could tell she's getting frustrated. Yeah, she started walking back a couple times on defense when you stole it from her, and, and it led to some transition threes for us and really extended that lead there. But she averages probably close to 20 points a game, and you shut her down to four tonight. So, that for that reason, you're, you're, a Murphy, a you're a Murphy Bobcat player of the game, Eliza. Congratulations. And I'll have you a shirt later on yeah. this week, hopefully. And we'll bring in You'll Coach. Bring it, give that to Coach Kallenberg. It's right there. Thank you. Coach Kallenberg comes in here on a little bit of a win streak here, two in a row over two 4A schools. So that's pretty good. Uh, time anytime you'll take those, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I thought in the first quarter you guys were come out a little bit slow. You were down 13 to 5. Ended the quarter on 11-0 run, go up 16-13. Talk yeah. about that. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I told them at the end of that, you know, at the end of the first quarter right there, I, you know, the first thing I did was praise them for showing some grit and resolve. Um, and I think that's some of the growth you're seeing in this team. And we talked about it. We talked about it last game as well. Last year's team doesn't doesn't win that game. Yeah. Last year's team doesn't do what this, you know, what, what that group did right there. So very proud of them of, you know, kind of bowing their back and, and showing some resolve right there. Coach, you go to Eliza Hicks tonight, the sophomore, uh, really defensive specialist. Uh, just what a tremendous job she did on Gonzalez tonight in the uh, first half. Absolutely. You know, that's the thing. I mean, she, 
she's such a good athlete. And, I, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, always get caught up in, you know, score, score, score. But that's a perfect example right there of, you know, starring what your role is going to be. And we told her tonight, look, when she doesn't have it, limit her touches as much as possible, know where she's at in transition, um, and keep her off the glass. And I thought she did a heck of a job. She did. Yeah, she really took her out of the game in the first Talk half. about how she was walking down the court. A couple times after frustrating, she, we saw her walk back, and you hit two threes in a row. Right. It's five on four. You know, right. you had the extra pass. So, right. Uh, so, anyway, uh, great win tonight. So, now – Friday night, big game. Even though it's not a district game anymore, right. it's still a big game. William Blunt Heritage. Right. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, you know, obviously Rick does a great job over there. They're playing well right now. Really good basketball team. Um, you know, and we're, we're a little banged up and not healthy, but it's like I told them before this game. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us, right? They're coming over here to win a basketball game, and when we walk out the doors, we're walking out to win a basketball game. So we've definitely got to get better these next two days and try to prepare the best we can and hopefully get a little bit healthier and, Line it up and see what happens. One other thing I want to bring up that I should have brought up earlier in the game. I thought you guys did a great job on the offensive glass tonight. You all did a much better job tonight on the offensive glass. Now, you still gave up some deep. It seems like Sliger and Hooper, two big girls, got everything that went up, at least, at least in the second half. Right. But talk about your effort on you on your offensive glass. Yeah, that's something we stressed before the game. You know, them playing that zone, we felt like there were some holes if we got in there that we could create some second chance opportunities. And it's something I'll have to go back and look at as far as on the film of the offensive rebounds we gave up, just seeing if some of that was, you know, how we were guarding. Yeah. We're in the wrong spot or that kind of stuff. But yeah, I felt like we, you know, we really tried to make a more concerted effort of us getting on the offensive glass night based on where we thought we could attack their zone. Thank you, Coach. We'll see you Friday night as the Lady Goes will have the Lady Mountaineers in-house for a Crosstown rivalry game. We'll take a two-minute break, come back with the tip-off and starting lineups here for the boys' game. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. We're back here at Marvin L. Boring Gymnasium as the boys action now. Stan McMinn County is a team that went down to the state tournament last year, but they had a couple transfer out and a couple graduates, and this year on the scoreboard, they have not had the same success. Starting yeah. lineups brought to you by Lawn Butler of Knoxville, your one-stop shop for all your landscaping needs. Give them a call, 777-1755. Number four will be Rylan Adams. Number 10, Reese Frazier. He's the one to watch out for. Number 12, Brady Mullins. Number 40, as the lights go out, I don't have a light up here. 
Number 40 is Andrew Br Branch, I believe. Brown, Brown. Now your starting line of four, your six and one William Blunt Governors. Number five, Brett Cortez. A little bit gimpy tonight, but he's gonna give it a go. Number four, Trevor Scarlett. Had a great week last week, scoring 21 in two out of the three games. Big man that can step out and do a little bit of everything. Lucas Henson, 6'4 guard. Grady Robertson running the show now these days. And a 6'6 senior, number 20, Caden Wendell. Coached by Kevin Wendell. Assistants Jordan Tarver, Jordan Conley, and Grant Reardon. William Blunt will be in white tonight and McMinn County in black. It looks like Frazier's going to tip it off against Wendell. And I only see two, two seniors on their whole roster, Robbie, so pretty young basketball team. Anywhere movers tipped up and controlled by William Blunt. Scarlett has it. Looks over to Cortez, who will go to Scarlett and to Wendell. Skip pass over to Grady. Sets his feet. 3 nothing. William Blunt. Yeah, Grady kind of snuck in back here near the William Blunt logo. Just stood there. Ended up finding him open. Frazier has it left side to, I didn't get this number, number four, Adams. Adams. Yeah. Now 12 is Mullins. I think he's a pretty good shooter, but that didn't look good right there. And there should be one more. Oh, number one. one. Uh, Jock Williams. Williams. Wendell with it across the timeline, right side to Robertson, back to Wendell. He will shoot it and score it. Wow. It looked like it slipped. Yeah, he it did still it. went in. Five nothing, seven ten left here, opening quarter. Great start for the Govs. Last week didn't have good starts, but they still did go three and up. Frazier has it cut off there by Cortez. Back cut, finds nobody. Williams, it's stolen by Scarlett. He's in the front court. Right hand dribble off the foot of Wendell. Of Wendell. It'll be a turnover. Yeah, that one kind of a tweener. Bullens, William Blunt will go 2-2-1, two, two, three-quarter court pressure. And Williams is trapped. They'll throw it to Mullins. Around the horn to Frazier, his first shot. Short rebound window on the backside. He'll bring it across the timeline. Here he comes. Left to pull up jumper for Grady. Good. 7 nothing. Grady had nine in the first quarter the other night, Stan. He's got five tonight. Yeah. They're coming out hot again. A little weave action here. Mullins has it. Over to Frazier. Frazier will shoot a gap. Get it to the corner. Williams for three. Good. No. Long. And Trevor with a board. Goes around his brat. Doesn't have numbers, but he'll get it to Wendell on the left side. Up top to Cortez. Cortez floater. It's going to be an offensive foul on Cortez. Good job there of Adams, I believe, taking the charge. First, sub. first. Teams first. First sub into the game will be Jacob Sharp, number 23. Not a lot of size on this uh, McMinn County team. Like you say, Frazier jump center stand. Yeah. Should try to get a final from Maryville as Maryville and Heritage Girls should be a final by now. Three ball, no good. Rebound Robertson, his first rebound of the game. Working. Oh, goes right side Hit. to Henson. He stepped, stepped out on of the bounds. He wasn't ready for it, Robbie. I don't think he knew where he was at on the court. And just too wide over there. Robbie, you said that William Blunt beat this team twice last year that went to the state. Yeah, they beat them by 25 or more up here. We beat them by about 15, I believe, down there. And a wild shot, no good there by Frazier. Henson has the board. He'll bring it across. Now go center to Cortez. Left side, Grady. Corner three. Trevor. Good. Final. Timeout, McMinn County after the party's on three ball. It's a party at the Marv as William Blunt takes a 10-0 lead at this first 30-second timeout brought to you by Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. Stan, what a start. Yeah, it certainly is, Robbie. This is what William Blunt's been looking for. As you said, they had a couple of slow starts, and uh, they could they could get this in IDOs quickly uh, tonight. If, you watch, if, if, if Big Ben County's not 
careful. But what I was going to say, Robbie, about the two times, that just tells you what kind of region we play in blood is in. And, yeah. You know, because all regions are not the created same. equal. It's, of course, they do they play the sectionals and so forth. And really, forth. there was a chance if we had beat Dobbins Bennett that we'd have matched up with yeah. them in the first round down there in the state tournament. And that's who I was, I was like, yeah, we need to win this game after we saw they won. But things didn't go our way last year. Here comes uh, Jacob Sharp. He'll get it out to Mullins. Back. Oh, nice back up, but he dropped it. And Cortez knocks it out of bounds. Get it in the corner. Now working it back to the corner. It's Frazier working against Robertson. Robertson, good D. Frazier pivots, shot no good, rebound Wendell. Wendell's got Trevor. He'll go to Trevor. Trevor will attack, a little floater right hand, no good. Wendell, Short tipped. It. Wendell tipped it in. Good job of Caden running the floor right there, guys. Trevor short-armed it a little bit, I felt like. Another deflection there. Adams thought about it, won't shoot it. Frazier has the count now. He broke it. He'll attack the Grimm, throw it off to Sharp. Corner three, short, rebound, Robertson. Robertson goes ahead to Wendell. Wendell will dribble and skip it across to Grady. Grady thought about a three, now penetrates. Kicks to Trevor, another one. No, rebound, Caden grabs it. Looks inside to Henson, can't get it to him. Back to Cortez. Clean look, top of the key, strong. Hit the, guy, the wire. The old guy wire here, William Blunt. Lipinski set the check in here. He'll check in for Henson. And then it looks like Jock Williams is going to check back in along with somebody else. Uh, looks to be number 33. You That's Marbury. Mark. If he plays like number 33 for the New York, New Jersey Nets, uh, Stephon Marbury, we might be in trouble. <laughs> but I don't think he will. <laughs> Frazier misses another one. I think he's 0 for 4. Mullins has it. Guarded by Scarlett. William Blunt, man to man, most of the game. Hands it to Frazier. He walks. Get an extra step. No call. And they're off the snide, as Dusty would say. Grady in, Grady, no, rebound Mullins. Frazier gets it in the front court, poked away from him. Oh, Chris Mullins. Dabrowski's gonna check in for Cortez here. Mullins playing three, strong rebound, Grady. Three minutes to play, it's 12 to 10. William Lund in the front court now. Robertson, three ball, good. good. No defenses, they didn't stop the ball or the guy trailing. That's another Roll Arena three ball. Frazier, working it against Scarlett. Turning the corners, Adams. This shot is wildly air ball. Marbury had it, saved by Dabrowski. Here comes Wendell into the front court, going to step into an 18-footer. He's hit on the arm. No call, and it's short. Williams goes into Adams. Now kick ball out of Wendell. Cortez will get Scarlett. Go Gonzalez checks in for McMahon as well, Robbie. Number 11. Number 11. Okay, I see. Marbury in the corner. They're going to try to get it back to Frazier for the three. They could. Now Williams working it around. That's Gonzalez. Hands it to Frazier. He works on Dabrowski. Corner to Williams. He'll float it over to Frazier. Frazier shot. No good. Robertson gets another board. High board from Grady Robertson. He will attack. Over to Wendell. Over to Dabrowski. Dabrowski pump fakes, lays it up, lay it in. Lipinski with his clear out too underneath there for it. Just a little post up. A little Polish, the aggressive Polish nightmare with the aggressive post up. Frazier 
Williams turns the corner, gets to the elbow, finds Gonzalez for three, air ball. 17 to two, but a bad pass by G-Rob. And a bird will check in for Lipinski. Seventeen to two, one twenty-five left here in the opening quarter. It's been all William Blunt. And a tough pass got there. Frazier gets it up top. Gonzalez three ball. Good. A lot of space up top. Good pass to find him. Wendell into the front court will attack. His shot is blocked by Marbury. Frazier, deep three, short. Cortez had it, but knocked out of his hand. Marbury's all over the place. Brady with his sixth first quarter rebound. Into the front court, 45 ticks left in the quarter. Hand check call on Williams. That'll be his first, team's first. Yeah, only two fouls called in this game. Can't beat that. 44.8 to go here. It's been all William Blunt. Cortez finds Bird. Bird back to Cortez. Back to Bird. Posted up on the block, working it, working it with a dribble. Drop step, fade away. Missed it all. And a good rebound for Mullins. 30 seconds left, opening quarter. Williams finally shoots one. Misses it. Robertson tipped it over to Bird. 23 on the clock. Gabrowski in the front court. Back to Cortez around the horn. Bird to Robertson, back to Bird, into Cortez. He'll lay it off, no, what a pass. No look, feed, G-Rob for another three. All set up by Brett Cortez on the low look, find outside. Pull up 18 footer, strong, Robertson boards. Three seconds, he can get one up. One at the buzzer, a little strong. Your score at the end of one, William Blunt 20. McMinn County five, we'll take a 60 second break. Doesn't feel 20 to 5, does it? If it doesn't demand. High school second quarter action, Rob Watts. Here we go, man to man D, actually 131. Skip pass, got through the hands of Marbury, and he throws it oh, off the handsome, but he saved it. Over to Robertson, bringing it across. Pulls up three ball, G Rob, strong rebound. Off. Top of the glass. Yep, yep. And Cortez would have had it, but he hit the top and went over. Couple games in elementary. We'll try to get those scores stand. It was Carpenters taking on Mary Blunt and girls action, and Carpenters taking on Prospect and boys action. Let's see if I can get the finals. Owens again, no good on the three ball. Robertson doing a great job. He finds Wendell in transition. Wendell laid up. He draws foul. a foul. Yep. Foul is going to go against you remember Marbury. Last, you remember last year, Wendell had a highlight dunk against McMinn County. Down there, off right. Off the backboard, yeah. This team's sec or first of the second quarter, but shooting was Caden Wendell, so he'll get two tosses. First one's good. Five points on the night for Mr. Wendell. Make it six. Once up by 17, 22 to five. Early in the second, a steal by Scarlett. Behind his back, gives it to Wendell. Wendell. Over nice to Robertson. Robertson. Oh, oh man, missed he missed it. it. Wendell could have took that. Very unselfish there. Three ball, Frazier no good. Marbury's boards it. Marbury's blocked by Henson. Then the late foul called by Pinkerton. 
assume this is going to be on it Henson. Is. It will It'll be Henson's first, team's first of the second quarter. But Mr. Mulberry will get two free tosses as he was in the act of shooting with 6.55 to go. Southpaw nails the first one. Bryce Mullins checks in, freshman. I'm assuming he's probably Brady's brother. There are a lot of Mullins in McMinn County, I must tell you. We've had some football players, basketball players down there. Here comes Robertson for William Blunt. Too much space for Scarlett. Around the rim, no good. Put back by Cortez. 24-7, six and a half to play. Here comes Frazier, over to Mullins, back to Frazier. He'll attack, oh, he traveled again. Yep, it's gonna get called this time. Finally, my gosh. Heritage girls, Robbie, all over Maryville, 61-38. And that was at Heritage yes. tonight? 61 38. Okay. So Heritage moves to 8 and 1. Maryville drops to 2 and 6 on the season. Scarlett has it. He'll attack. Charge. Guy go. stripped it out of his hands. Scarlett picks up his first. Team second here in the second quarter. Yeah, he was looking to get it to Wendell early up top. Really good job by Jock Williams guarding Wendell. Unable to get it to him. Bryce Mullins is just a freshman. He's going to fire away. He's going to nail hit. it. If you're on varsity of a 4A team, you're probably pretty good as a freshman. Yes. So don't want to let him shoot. Scarlett around the horn to Henson. He gets inside the window. I bet this one goes up. Oh, oh, nice pass to Robertson. Nice Robertson oh. again. Shot up, shot in. Got Great. his guy in the air. He yep. was able to adjust. 13 points for Grady. In half of William Blunt's. Flips it up. Wrong spin on it did Frazier. How many points does Frazier have? Two? Wendell finds Cortez. Lay it up. No good. Rebound Robertson. He will score it. Mr. Frazier, Robbie, does have two points. Grady does not. Grady has 15. <laughs> <laughs> he averages 20. High post extended. It is Brown with it. Now to Williams. Back to, don't let him shoot Mullins, the younger Mullins. Now Williams will fire. No good. Rebound Robertson. I'm going to say Robertson's got 15 and 10. He's really close. Scarlett will throw it to Robertson. Find Wendell. Wendell will shoot it. Wendell will score it. Makes it look too easy. 28 10, or 30 10, excuse me. Well, last week we had us we had an adios at the buzzer of the halftime. It might come sooner than that. Well, Frazier. Unless Frazier keeps striping it. Lipinski's checking in here. He'll check in for Henson. And then number three, Womack. Bryson Womack is going to check in here for McMinn County. Let's see the Polish nightmare take out some more people here. Well, he, meant, he went over on his uh, foul uh, seconds. Too easy on the baseline jumper for Wendell. Said 45 seconds, and he played three minutes in the first quarter, didn't pick up a foul. That's unlike him. He might have fouled, they just didn't call it. <laughs> Good D by Cortez, they'll switch it up top. Younger Mullins has it, he'll hand it to his brother. Three ball up, short, rebound Womack. Now to Williams, back to Bija, Brady. Shot good, floater up and nice. That's his first scratch, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He's usually, I think, mostly just a three-ball shooter. Lipinski sets a flare screen for Wendell. In and out, no good. Rebound Lipinski. His shot up. Good. Shot in. 
Lipinski on the offensive glass. Now you gotta get a stop. There's take his first foul. He was late, <laughs> take the charge. He was there, just gotta take it. His first, team's third. Might have knocked the wind out of him too. In the act of shooting here was Williams. So he will get two stosses. Short on the first one. No good. Sharp's going to check back in here for McMinn County. He'll check in for the Elder Mullins. They just don't have any size on their roster, do they? No. As I look over their roster, hits the second toss. They do have a guy list 6-1. Oh, they got a guy list 6-5 here. Mulberry. Lipinski and one! Cortez finds him. Let's see if we get a Heartland replay on this one. As Penske gets it, pump fake, fade away, bucket. And a chance for the old fashioned three point play. He had a violation. On. I'm not sure who it was on. It was on William Blunt, but I don't know who. Either way, so no attempt on the free throw. He remains one for six this season. Second quarter three balls brought to you by Murphy Bobcat. Mur that's the second one. By the freshman. And I say that's probably why he's playing with the varsity team, guys. As Scarlett's going to try and match it, and he does. There's a Murphy Bobcat three as Caden gets in deep, kicks it to the corner for three. It's 39 19. He violated his own <laughs> shot. Are we getting replay confirmation? Yeah. Lipinski was the one that went over the line on the shot. He knew it was off. Oh, okay. So, so he was getting... Wendell lays it up and in. Nice find from Grady. Too deep. Crossover by Frazier. He'll get in. He'll get it no good. And put his tip in, though. Good. Yep, Robertson missed time the jump there. Left it open for him. Oh, luckily Bryce touched it. Sub in, Williams out, Brady Mullins back in. Just under two minutes left here in the opening half. It's been all William Blunt. Wendell has it, pump fake inside to Grady. He's being bear hugged. Didn't matter, he scored anyways. Mullins working left side, finds Womack. His layup's no good. Tip out of bounds off of Lipinski. We'll have dance team on the screen tonight at halftime here on the Gov Nation Network. Inside pass off of Wendell. Tip for Cortez, but into the hands of McMinn County. Nice job that time. Lipinski cuts him off, and Cortez bats it out of bounds. Good trap there by the two footballers. Now, Frazier coming up the top of the key really hasn't had a problem driving in on William Blunt. Maybe something to look at in the future here. Might be too little too late on the score. Frazier fade away, no good. Rebound G-Rob. He's got Trevor left and he'll work it himself. He'll find Cortez. He shoots a three, no good off to the right. Rebound Mullins. Into the front court. There's Brady Mullins. Yep. His first three ball of the night. We're under a minute to go. William Blunt by 19. Sharp, Garden, Grady. Cortez will find Scarlett. Scarlett looks into Lipinski. Lipinski left hand layup, no good. Oh, no good again. Hammer. Wendell boards it. Wendell oh. scores it. Do you count that as a dunk, guys? He pulled on the rim. I don't think so. <laughs> it didn't go downward. It no. kind of went straight yeah. towards off the backboard. If it would have been a downward motion, maybe. Pull up, 15 footer, Mullins good. Family of shooters are the Mullins. The Mullins are Pullins. 
at the Marv tonight. But it only pulls him within 19 as we have 15 seconds. Sharp deflects it into the backcourt. 10 seconds. Wendell gets it. Nine as he works against Brady. Wilson's He's going to get a ball screen. He will cross over. Three seconds. Back at half court. Catch it. Fire. Bottom. Adios. There's your adios signal as they back off of him. And K-Dog puts it from the B-Dog. 48-26. Take a two-minute break here at the halftime. There's your replay. Back at William Blunt High School, you see the halftime shootout. This is the Heartland Roofing Halftime Report where it's been all William Blunt as they have jumped all over the Cherokees of McMinn County High School. 48-26 is your halftime score in favor of the Govs. So we'll move right into stats with Stan as you watch the halftime competition down below. And brought to you by Tim Tipton Realty. You let Tim a, give Tim a call. Uh, Tim a call for all your realty needs. It's, it's a poor shooting going on right here, Carter. At halftime, I don't think he made hit the rim hardly. No, it, it's, it's not looking like it did a couple nights ago where we had four or five guys hit one. Scott Cup be loving that. Doesn't have to give away any money. It's a girl right here. She'll drain the three. Here's your first half scoring. For William Blunt, they're led by Caden Wendell with 17 points on the night as he hit the half court three pointer there at the buzzer to pass Grady Robertson, who has 15 points. So Caden and Grady have combined for 32 of William Blunt's 48. Six points from Trevor Scarlett, four points from Max Lipinski. Two points from Brent Cortez. Two points from Jackson Dabrowski. And, yeah, I think that's all I hit it. I didn't get Cortez. So, total of 48 right there for the governor. Over on the McMinn County side, they are led by Reese Frazier with seven points. Brady Mullins has added seven points. Bryce Mullins with six points. Three points from Gonzalez. Two points from Marbury and one from Williams, and that is not enough 
is McMahon Trails, William Blunt, 48 to 26. We'll take another two minute break and we'll be back. Second half action right here at the mark. Don't go anywhere. Back at William Blunt High School for the halftime show. Wrapping up here, brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Be sure to give Nate a call for all your roofing needs. Robbie, uh, William Blunt on the get-go, I think, jumped out 10 or 12 to nothing to start this game, yeah. and it's they've not let up. Yeah, 10 to. Uh, yeah, it's it's just they that second quarter that's been the consistency for them this year. It's like the first quarter, they just kind of get going, and then second quarter, they've been able to explode. Uh, some scores, Heritage, uh, you mentioned the girls got beat, or beat Maryville soundly right now. Maryville boys leading 29 to 22 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, 
And then uh, I don't know what Lepinski would have. Lepinski's having a conversation with Brent Tyler. <laughs> he's, he, he's, he cracks me up, man. He's having a good time. That's what I tell you. No matter what, you have a good time yes. while you're here. You're only here for a short time. So have a good time. But, um, yeah, so then you had a, another score. I was trying to uh, – I was thinking of another score, but a couple girl scores I saw. I oh saw yeah, yeah, that's what we were talking Forest about. Forestown East picked up a win tonight over Tennessee High. We William Blunt beat last week for Morristown East. Morristown West got a huge win over West, Knoxville West, 77 to 11. As the West Rebels have some issues. Quick turnover into the front court. Here comes Cher- the Cherokees and shuffled his feet. Yep. Frazier, Frazier's traveled quite a bit tonight. They've called him for two of them. be side out of bounds. We'll trigger it into window. Well, that's the new rule change right there, right, Robbie? They throw it in. Yeah, there's four different spots. They throw it in on the out of bounds. But Wendell just gets pushed by yeah, Mullins he did. and then shouldered by him. Yeah, twice. What did Wendell have in the first half? 17. Oh, my gosh. I was like, he's having a bad night. He got fouled right there, I thought. Here's a scarlet real. three. Bottom. Bench warning on Kevin as he voiced his opinion about how Caden got fouled. It's a Bowen door service here in the three, third quarter. Bowen door service, three balls, making your best first impression. And then a technical one, Coach Coach Wendell, or one of the one of the coaches here. And get ready, get him again. He and just did. Yeah. So now Kevin's out Friday night. Wow. And Campbell County. He clapped because he said all I did was clap. Soft. Soft officiating That's there. pretty quick. Pretty quick. Yeah, yeah and, and, and really, Grant probably should have let it go. I, I don't know really. The situ- hey, the st- what the situation you're supposed to do if you separate yourself or whatever. But he just kind of clapped like that gummit. He wasn't up or standing up. Standing, or no, he, he didn't stand down. up. He didn't yell. He just clapped. So four free throws here for McMinn County. And... So four free throws right here by Mullins. It's three for three, make it four for four. Which it won't matter in this game, but it matters in the future games as he has to sit out two games. And that will be Heritage on Friday night. And Campbell County 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 on the road next next Tuesday. So that'll be two tough games without their head coach. There's a back cut layup by Frazier. Six-point possession there for Cherokees. And he can still coach during the week, can't he? He just can't be on yeah, the floor. Yeah, he can't yeah. be on the yeah. bench. Yeah, yeah. he'll be at practice. It'll be Jordan Conley going to have to do the head coaching. Wendell takes it, slipped and fell again on this side of the court. Yeah, it's, it's something about the, maybe the way that it's, it's cleaned every night, because I know they turn around on this side. Yeah. Could be something related to that. Wendell gets a steal. Wendell will attack. Wendell will lay it in. Too easy the finger roll. Yeah, that's why I was, I was talking to how Wendell only had 17. I didn't feel like he had that many. I know the three at the buzzer, but average is 28 a game, and I thought he was going well, to be He had 13 little... in the third quarter, or second quarter. Inside pass, Marbury lay it in. They're going to press, try to get some pressure and, and make the tempo. There's a turnover. And missed the layup. Phone calls on Tuesday night. Shot up, no good. Wendell will board it. Wendell will. He's get fouled. fouled. And he said, "What?" Barberry did. And the whole, the whole, the whole arena saw you foul. Time out, William Blunt. This one brought to you by Blevins Realty Group, making your best first impression. I'm sorry, Blevins Realty Group, making buyers and sellers happy. We'll keep it here, Stan. 
as it's just a 30 second timeout, 19 point lead for, uh, and I really don't know, can they retract one of those? I, don't I mean, know. I know you can appeal, but then, but I don't know I don't why think, you would. I don't think you're going to get a, a grant and an appeal there, Robbie, on that. But. but, but you know, usually once you see like a guy get a, a technical, they kind of go away, and then the other referee kind of comes in and tries to calm down the the situation or whatever. But, but did anybody do that? Did no. anybody? Nobody. And that's no. Then Kevin the, just he was. I saw yeah. him on the bench just clapped. But here's what happened. Of course, as Wendell shoots first. There was a bench warning, a technical, and then another technical, all in probably about 30 seconds. Yeah, you, I mean, you didn't ha you didn't give any time for, right. for tensions to cool down. And obviously, we don't know what Coach Wendell said to cause the tech, but at the same time, you would think that they'd try and de-escalate the situation and let them get their last two or three words in. Right. Yeah, the mo they, uh, I guess after what we saw Friday night, there's a three ball no good by Mullins. Wendell boards it and gets fouled from behind. I believe that's going to be on Frazier. It is. But, you know, Friday night, both coaches were real animated working the officials over. And they were talking back and forth. But tonight, it was complete opposite. Uh, Mullen gets hit with a foul in the backcourt. His first, uh, team seconds. He's... he's Brady's getting kind of into Caden. Uh, and uh, some of the William Blunt faithful is not happy. Grady will get it into the front court. He'll find Lucas Henson. Three ball left. No good. Wendell boards it. Wendell is fouled again. Well, keep putting him to the line. Let him make him. We'll be in the bonus. Marbury picks up his third. Team's fourth. So two shots coming for Caden Wendell, who's up to 21 points on the night. Make it 22. Sharp's going to check in here. He'll check in for the younger Mullins. As Caden nails both. So blunt up a 23. Inside Marbury, shot blocked by Lucas Henson, his second of the game. Cortez will find Wendell. Nobody's guarding him. He'll just shoot a wide open wow. three. I think he's leading the state in three pointers. Sub here for McMinn County. That's going to be number 40, Andrew Brown. He'll check in for Marbury. Maybe. Twenty-six point lead now as Caden hits it. Caden does have twenty-six too, Robbie. Uh, close to his average, too short. There's an air ball. Rebound might have been partially blocked. I think by it Wendell. was. Wendell will catch it in the front court. Hesitation dribble. We'll find skip pass to Trevor. One more to Lucas. He'll shoot it. He will miss it. And then Robertson hits the deck. I think it's going to be on Gonzalez, and this will be it'll be shooting yeah. two. Well, really good job there by Wendell whenever he caught the pass to stop. Sharp was set up for the charge. Yeah, body control. Tell you what, William Blunt's got to be careful here. I mean, I know they're getting physical, I think, right there. And you I don't think, want any player adjustments. Right. Grady got up, and I think good job by Cortez kind of calm him down a little bit. Grady hits his, scores his first point in the second half. And Grady plays with an edge, you know, and that's what makes him yeah, I understand. So that. good, but yeah, you don't want to go over the edge. Especially in a, a 30 game point like game. This. Yeah, that's, that's. Gonzalez into the front court. Hands to Frazier. Shot up, shot short. Rebound Grady. He'll bring it across the timeline. Hands it to nobody. I believe it was. No? Okay. I thought it might have been tipped by Sharp. They'll say no. Just lost the handle, I guess. 429 to go here in the third quarter. Let's get this lead a little bit more, bring in some subs and take the fourth quarter off. Get ready for the Mountaineers. Gonzalez hits the gap, finds Sharp. Sharp will shoot it. 
and miss it. Rebound, G Rob. Over to Cortez. Four minutes to play. Cortez, it looks in the high post to Grady. Grady will drop step. Count it. Wow. <laughs> and one. The old fashioned Bowen door service three ball. Opportunity for Grady. He has 21. Oh, looked like a sure flop by Sharp. Yeah, I thought they would just let that go. Maybe that's why he called it, though, because he flopped. Yeah. He Grady. nails the free throw. What's Grady from the line? I'll get it just a second here. Grady just got that one. He's three for three. Oh, okay. For uh, 24 points. Lipinski and Dabrowski set to check in here for the Govs. Sharp has it. Working against Wendell. Wendell wants man to man this possession. Here comes Frazier. Oh, he took another extra step. Yeah, they didn't call it. And then he's going to try and draw contact. Going to be no good rebound, Robertson. Wendell tips it over to Robertson. Now to Wendell. Wendell will lay it up. Wendell will miss oh, it. Oh, man. Grady boarded it, but it's tipped out of bounds. Lipinski and Dabrowski come in. They'll come in for Henson and Cortez. It looked like Grant Tyler just gave McMahon County coach a warning. There's a hole by 23. I'm not sure what he's doing. We're playing basketball, brother. Well, two this fouls this on him. This ain't wrestling. Shots. They've been on him. The student sections have been on him, Robbie, and I don't think he's real happy with them. As Grady continues to knock down free throws. I don't know what the head coach is over here trying to explain. So he was bench warning too. Who, who, who bench uh, warning him? Grant, Grant just told him that was enough. Huh? Oh, okay. He didn't really bench warning. He didn't request it. There's a turnover. Timeout, McMahon County. It's this timeout is going to be brought to you by Circulation Station. Station, relieving pain with technology. Get three free treatments when you mention you listen to the Voice of Champions AM 1470. And into the front court. Dabrowski has it. He's got Wendell posted. Player screen to Robertson. Can't get it to him. Now Scarlett has it. He'll go around the horn to Dabrowski. Now Grady. Grady will pull up 15 footer. Good. Uh, anywhere in that mid range, you feel comfortable with Grady putting the ball up. 35 point lead. So if this is the score, they're going to call a bump, I believe. Scarlett. Be Scarlett's second. I'm going to say he got him on the arm. Third team, but he was in the act of shooting. So two shots coming right here for Frazier. First was good. Two guys checking in here the younger Mullins and Jock Williams. Chuck, they'll check in for Sharp and Gonzalez. Stan, did I mention Carpenters yet? That they uh, both won? No, I don't. Carpenters Elementary okay. boys and girls are going to the championship. Lipinski misses it. Had another layup. And then a tie-up. Alternate possession goes to McMinn. 2.38 to go in this third quarter. 
Cortez you know, guys, is going to check in. Guys, from the yeah, mercy As long room. as it's 35 in the start of the fourth, it'll never go, it'll never stop once you go under. It looks like Lipinski might have tweaked his ankle there, so Cortez is going to check in for him. Mullins, three, short, rebound, Grady, over to Wendell. Wendell ahead of the pack is Brett Cortez. Oh, wow. He'll find Dabrowski to Wendell, one-handed dunk. <laughs> Here comes Frazier for a floater, short, rebound, got his own, missed it. Grady has it. Grady will bring it across. He's got Dabrowski to his left, over to Wendell for another one. Oh, oh man, it. almost. Almost had back-to-back -back jams there. A little too far away from the rim, I think. And it was pretty much vertical. Trying to, that's a two-point bucket for Mullins. No good. Grady into the front court. Going to work on Williams. Skips it to Cortez. And he lost it out of bounds. So Marbury's going to check in here. He'll check in that was a for non Brown. Nonchalant one-handed catch. <laughs> Brett. Alan Hughes and Brooks Bird in for Wendell and Cortez. Wendell with 28 leaves the game, probably not coming back in. Rebound Scarlett after another miss by Frazier. Head of the pack is Dabrowski. He'll catch it. Touchdown, Debo. We've seen that before. 37 point lead. Skip pass to younger Mullins. Bryce for his third one, short. Rebound Dabrowski, too strong. He'll bring it into the front court. With his head up, crosses over, is fouled by Marbury. And it'll get a trip to the line for Debo. Marbury's fourth. Yeah, trying to argue that Hughes bumped him into him, or he, pushed him into he him. He may but, have. Yeah. No call, so that'll send Dabrowski to the line for two. Jackson with four points tonight. Dabrowski has four. Yep. He averages five and a half a game, so we're right at his threshold. It's the first. More importantly, gives William Blunt a 38 point lead, Robbie. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. McMahon Don't. can't get it under that in the last minute seven, make it 39-point lead. It'll only stop on timeouts. I think this is out of our uh, eight games, or nine now, so are we, are we six and one or seven and one? We're six and one, six I think. And, so out of the eight games, I think half of them have been into the mercy rule. First one that we've had on broadcast, though. Three ball, no good. Rebound by Allen Hughes. He rips it right away from him. Finds Grady in the front court. Grady crosses over. 45 seconds to go. Kicks it over to Hughes. Hughes will attack and find Bird. Bird thought about a three from the top of the key. Bird's got a good set shot. A lot like another Bird that we used or that used to play basketball. It's simpler, ain't it? Hughes for three. Ah. Oh. No good. Dabrowski pushed off on the first and then pushed off, I guess, either that's a late. It was a late call. Yeah, so four fouls, foul to give there. 23.9 left in the third quarter. So it looks like we're going to get to the mercy roll stand. It's Mulberry gets to the rack, misses, puts it back up. Good. Mulberry, six points of the night for him. William Blunt leads by 37 with five seconds to go. So barring some kind of crazy turnover and they scoring, it's Grady. Grady Robertson, three ball at the buzzer. That's a Bowen door server shutting the door in the third quarter. The Govs take a 78-38 lead to the fourth. We'll take a 60 second break.
set the starters in. Fourth quarter action here. Uh, starters are back in. Um, 40 second lead, or 40, 40 point lead. Trevor makes it 42. <clears throat> Marbury shot up, nearly deflected, and a rebound for Robertson. Inside pass, Wendell stolen away there by Frazier. Nice play. Young Frazier brings it in the front court. Or, I'm sorry, Rung Mullins. Goes around the horn to Gonzalez. One extra pass to Brady. Brady shot up. Brady shot short, tipped up, no good. Good try by Frazier. Here comes G Rob into the front court. Right hand dribble over to Wendell. Wendell will lay it over to Cortez. Cortez! Oh, man. Almost dunked it. They're going to say two. They're, they're going to put Cortez to the line for two here. I think he got hit in the back of the head. Yeah. 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 That'll be Gonzalez. It was one of those, if he made it, he probably wasn't going to call it. Yeah. Regardless, good find by Why Wendell. Why the clock stopped? Are they on free throws? I guess so. Or maybe after the first one. Mercy rule. I don't know, Robbie. I've never seen the mercy rule. I've seen it. I mean, I have seen it, but I've never seen it done exactly the, the same, same way. Every, I'm, pretty every sure, twice. I'm pretty sure it runs all the way. To yeah. The, As now William Blunt's, well, they came back on. But. Just took a point off for two. No, it's right, I think. Okay, 81? Yeah, but it just went blank. Oh, what yeah. it did. We'll have wholesale substitutions after this. Cortez finds Luke Henson, spins, shot, fade away. Good. Hey, that was smooth. We're going to have some substitutions here. Five-man substitution. Looks like it's going to be Lipinski, Dabrowski, Breeding, and Brooks Bird, along with Alan Hughes. So I'd say the starters are done for the night. So Robertson's probably going to leave with 29 and Wendell with 28. <laughs> That's so, pretty good. Yep. Gets two big guys right there. Tough two there by Mullins. He gets, gets the roll. Mullins has had a good second half. Well, actually, first half as well. He's got 13 points to lead his team. Browski finds Seth. He's a shooter. Good look. Bird boards it. Bird scores it. Be hard, but the thing is now, Robert, Robbie, we charge block. He just didn't take it. He's there to take yeah. it. Didn't take it. He gave too much. Yes. Stan, what was you saying? Um, with the mercy rule, it'd be hard to get to 100 now, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For William Blunt. Two shots coming here. It's Frazier knocks the first toss down. Now we're running it, Robbie. Oh, we stopped it. Well, they were running it until he shot it. I don't know. I, I give up. Second one good as well. McMinn County with a couple substitutions of their own here. We've got some names we've yet to see. Working a press, almost a 10 second count. William Blunt finally gets it across. Hughes looks inside, Bird, another one. Yeah, he got lost over here in the corner, made a cut on the down the baseline to the basket, wide open. Bryce Mullins, little hand to Gonzalez. I'm sorry, that's not Gonzalez, that's number 30. Oh. Harbin. Now Womack, back to Har Harbin. Harbin is fouled. It's going to be on breeding his first. Student section chanting for Axel von Bosdorf. And it looks like Lucas Myers is going to check only in for Dabrowski. Axel, and now that Lucas is in, is Axel the only player that's not checked in yet? Right. He'll be he'll in He'll probably in just get Lipinski or Bird here shortly. Shot no good. Rebound by Hughes. 
here comes Myers into the front court. Stolen. Amen County. Harvin has it. Stolen by Bird. Nice. Bird oh, right wow. in the back. And oh. almost. He hit the he hit the padding hard though. <laughs> It about took out the photographer. Robbie, did you see the NFL game where the guy broke his leg? The, oh, the my chain? gosh, that was nasty. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that was going to be a repeat with he was going was, down through there. I was watching the red zone Sunday, and I look over and saw the guy's leg just dangling there. This bird misses the first. Axel's going to check in for Max Lipinski here. Axel Bosdorf will check in. He'll be coming in for Bird. He told me he's going to shoot it right away. Bird misses both. He came in for Lipinski. Oh, he came in for Lipinski. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Three oh eight left here as McMahon County gets it in the front court. Corner three going up. Corner three air ball rebound. Bonds Bonds door. Seth takes it, finds Lucas. Over to Allen. Allen on the baseline, working it on the block. Now with Womack. Shot up, no good. Rebound, Mullins on the backside. 2.40 to go as they bring it across. Left side, here comes Harvin. Finds Drake, Dake, I'm sorry. Now he'll throw it in the corner to Gonzalez. Gonzalez will penetrate, kick, go around the horn. Dake has it up top. Corner three coming for Mullins. Blocked by Hughes. Nice block by Allen. Seth will bring it across to Hughes. Seth into the front court. Looks to the left side. Myers. Lucas Myers for three. Just a little short. Womack rebounds. He goes ahead to Harbin. Harbin will outrun everybody and get fouled by Allen Hughes. Two shots coming. Hughes is first, team's third, Hughes fourth. Second, third. third, yeah, third. That's right. At the line is Harbin. So and Harbin with two shots coming. And he stopped. Good. Harbin hits the first, gets in the scorebook tonight. Checking in here, number 24, who we don't have on our roster. And number five, Madden Cobb. He hits both of them. Does Harbin gets two points? Myers in trouble. Got to get it over. Seth has it. He will lay it up. Lay it in, Seth Brady. Shot up by Harbin, no good. Bird boards it. Maybe they'll get it to him right here. Inside, Allen has it. Allen, Hughes, spins, drop step, lay it up, lay it in. 91 on the gov board. Gonna get a Harbin three short backside board bird. Bird's fouled and it will be a non shooting foul. It's only the third team foul. Cobb picked up the foul. The clock continues to tick down here. Cobb's a freshman. As you can kind of tell, so can't Mullins you? and Cobb are the freshmen on the yeah. court. Axel goes, will attack. Alex will lay it up. No good. I thought he got fouled. They're not going to call it at this juncture no, of the game. This late. Oh, Cobb. Cobb nice, shot. nice offhand finish. Ten seconds left. Got to get it across. He'll get it to Axel. Axel will bring it. He'll just dribble the clock out, maybe. No, they're going to they're gonna steal it from him and try to score before it ends. No. No shot. Your final score will be William Luck 91. And McMinn County 46. We'll take a couple minutes break, come back, and wrap it up here from Marvin Elboring Gymnasium. Today, I still can't get over that. That's pitiful.
We are back at William Blunt High School, and this is post-game show brought to you by Heartland Roofing. Be sure to give Nate a call over at Heartland Roofing for all your roofing needs. As Robbie, I see Scott Cup heading back to his office. Yeah, that's where the referees will be. I'm not sure that's a good idea at this point because I don't think he's real pleasant right now, Scott Cup. Regardless, we'll move right into the stats with Stan. Brought to you by Tim Tipton. Give Tim a call for any of your realty needs. Been a very experienced uh, realtor for a long time. Here is the scoring in this bloodbath. William Blunt beats McMahon County 91 to 46 is your final score. William Blunt led by the two big guns, Grady Robertson with 29 points. Caden Wendell with 28. 11 points for Trevor Scarlett. So Blunt had three guys into double figures. Six points out of Jackson Dabrowski. Four points for Max Lipinski. Four points from Brooks Bird. Three points from Brett Cortez. Two points each from Seth Breeding, Lucas Henson, and Alan Hughes. And that's a total of 91 for the Govs. The McMinn County Chiefs, or yeah, McMinn Cherokees. County Cherokees, excuse me, uh, were led by Brady Mullins and Reese Frazier, their two guards with 13 points each. Um, just not a lot of firepower after those two guys. Bryce Mullins, the, fr the freshman, came off the bench, had six points. Marbury also had his six points as well. Three points from Gonzalez, two points each from Cobb and Harbin, and a single point from Williams. And that was way too few to keep up with William Blunt as William Blunt, uh, Robertson, and Wendell outscored the Cherokees 57 wow. to 46 for them. So 91-46, your final score. Governors moved to 7-1 and one on the year. Uh, I think McMinn drops to like 1 and, or 2-6 and six or something like that. 1-6. and six. Uh, I think they were 1-. and. We'll play them again. Stan, do we play them? I don't think. I think we don't have oh, another okay. return game against them okay. this year. So I, I, if we if I'll we do, it'll be, yeah, I'm pretty sure, actually, now that you say that, I, I, yeah. it's Campbell that we return. Yeah, so. yeah Campbell County's coming up next Tuesday night. Heritage will be here Friday night for the next contest, Robbie, Friday night. Yeah, Friday on, night. Well, girls will tip around 6. Boys will follow around 7.30. Uh, the way the girls are playing right now, Stan, I give them a fighter's chance. I know Heritage has got a lot, really good, strong team. Well, if, if, if nothing else, see, even that, Robbie, you, you, yeah, you, you think they're going to play them better than they did last year. and yep. uh, But, you know, you just kind of see where you, you stack up. Right, I guess. And, and so if you, if you don't win the game, but, yeah, you know, playing on your home courts, you got to think, yeah, you got to uh, – and then, you know, next week, uh, no return to Campbell County, we will not have that game, but we'll be back here again next Friday night, and that's the first district game, Robbie. That's big, Farragut. Yep. On the 15th. Yep. So that'll be the only one before Christmas. Uh, right. And then uh, take a little Christmas break. We will. The teams won't. They'll be in a couple of tournaments. One in Anderson County, one at Destin, I guess. Right, Robbie? Yeah. You both, going, you going both, down to Destin? I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to have to stay and yeah. work and just watch watch it, watch it the broadcast on the Facebook yeah. feed um, as Brooks Bird's dad, Jeff, uh, will probably take care of that on Gov fans in the stands look it up on facebook and you can watch the broadcast um, so, and it actually may actually you can check out on gov nation network yep. it may be on there uh, we'll try to get it posted for you but, but nonetheless friday night the guys will be in action join us six o'clock we're going to call it a night from here from marvin Elborn gymnasium thanks for watching and god bless